Yeah, the little, little, little Korean children be watching this. That's right. We, we actually, it's funny, on, um, like on YouTube, you can see where they get watched. Mm -hmm. And so you can almost like guess, like, okay, where are people studying Latin? And so there's like yeah. a lot of South African students. Mm -hmm. So you, and it's almost like a chart of like British influence across the world, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um, chapter five. Um, any questions? It is hard. It is hard. Um, what were the things... What were the things that you felt like kind of up the ante, so to speak? Like, what made it more challenging? The sentences are just a lot longer and a lot okay. more complicated and harder to render in English. I okay. Know. Anyone in particular that kind of stood out to you? That's okay. Yeah, right. there's a bunch. Can we go for all of yeah. them? Which one's good? Okay. You can try number three under uh, practice and review. Okay. So number three, Pericola belli non son parma, sed patria tua te vocavit et agricolae adiuavant. Okay, so if one thing to kind of keep in mind is for the practice and review, and this I'm just so sympathetic, like you still have a professor who's kind of trying to write sentences that use the vocab you have, and so they'll sometimes be a little bit nonsensical, mm -hmm. or like not, not super meaningful, maybe. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Okay, so we've got, um, what are our verbs? A univabunt. Okay, a you wabunt is our third verb. It's all right, you wabunt. And just for fun, uh, can you parse that? Um, let's see, bunt. Future. Yeah. Good, so future and then. They. Yeah, yeah so third, future third and then active, indicative, and then person and number. Third person plural. Good, yeah. third person plural from a you wo, meaning. To help. help. To help, good, yeah. So you've got yowo and then adyowo, sometimes ud or com, or I'm oh, sorry, that's Spanish. Um, yeah, con or sometimes it, cum, um, it'll, it'll like intensify it, so like to aid or something. Okay, other verbs? Sunt. Sunt, okay, good. Okay, when we see the verb sunt, what should our brain load up to be aware of? Okay, what should we be looking for when I see this verb? Oh, I don't know. Who's the they? Okay, we could say who's the they, but what's special oh, about this? Predicate adjective. Good, okay. So we're going to be on the lookout for some kind of subject noun in the nominative and some kind of either predicate noun or predicate nominative or predicate adjective. And one of the things with, with Latin, and the same thing with English, and I bet it's the same thing as a doctor, is you... you you, you want to look for those clues that that might explain some other things you're going to find. You know what I mean? And kind of sting, uh, string them all together. So when I see a linking verb, I just want to be on the lookout. I bet I'm going to have a couple things in the nominative. Okay? And then one more verb. We'll call. We'll, we'll call we'll Good. We'll comment. We'll comment. We'll comment. Okay, so let's parse that. Tense voice mood. Future. Future, active, indicative, good. And then person number? Third person singular. Good. From Waco, meaning? To call. I call. Good. Excellent. Okay, so we've got three verbs. So we obviously have a compound, um, at least a compound predicate. And we can see it's, it's actually a complex sentence as well. So um, what are? Dangers, dangers of war. war. Okay, good. So the dangers of war, non sunt parma. Are not small. Good. The dangers of war are not small. That's actually a figure of speech called litities. Where you, say, where you say what something is not to say what it is. So, for example, Paul says, I'm the citizen of no small city. He's the citizen of Rome. So I'm the citizen of a huge city. So that's light to tease. The Romans love it, and the, the, the English, we pick it up from the Romans. Okay, so the second verb, we'll comment. So what we'll call? The fatherland. Good, the fatherland. Now we're sounding like German. That's good. So, yeah, or again, we can legitimately translate a country. Okay, okay so... The dangers of war are not small, but your fatherland will call you... Then? Is the Tua then or whatever? Um, tua is just an adjective meaning your. Okay. Yeah, so... I think that would, huh. But then why is it your and te is like... It's like Tua oh, and okay. Te. okay, so here's the difference. So we have what's called a personal adjective. Tuas, Tua, Tuum. It's just going to match whatever it modifies in gender, case, and number. What is te? Te is not a form of tuus. I was confused about that. I don't know. What is this? This is an adjective. Amado What's this? Amado te. Is that... A noun? It's a pronoun, actually. Yeah, so, so this is a pronoun the accusative. It's you? You. 
But then, okay, but your fatherland calls you. Yeah, there we go. So your fatherland or your country will call you. And then now, and Agricola on your wallet. And the farmers will help. Good, and the, fa the yeah, farmers will help. Sentence. Yeah, it is kind of a stupid sentence. Although, we have a city named after a farmer who helped out on the fatherland. And I just realized this today, I was thinking about it. Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, Cincinnati. Literally means of Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati. Yeah. So it's yeah. like Cincinnati's is town of yeah. Cincinnati, yeah. Genevieve. Yeah. There you go. So the farmers will help, and, and if they're virtuous, then they'll go right back to working in the field after. <laughs> like Cincinnati. our first president. George Washington. Washington yeah. who, who understood himself to be doing the same yeah, thing. American Cincinnati. I'll be called up, but yeah. then I'll be righteous and go back. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool how they think yeah. they're living in that story. Crazy idea. I know, it is amazing. Yeah. Anything else? It might be why you turned down the crown. Probably. Yeah. I mean, because they, the real purpose of history, right? Yeah. To train you into how you should live. Yeah. Okay, any other on that sense? Does that make sense? Then? That's good. Good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what number crazy. Uh, nine was Number nine. Okay, verbs? Uh, habes. Good, habes. Habes. Any other verbs? Stolte. Stolte doesn't look like a verb. What do you. Oh, uh, you think it might be an imperative? Is that you're saying the tag? Okay. That's not right. Look how it's set off by that comma, and it actually gives you a little bit of a hint. We're stulte. And since you referenced the onion earlier, um, the headline, the, the Latin underscript says, stulte sumus, I believe, we are fools, is what I think the headline, you can look that up. But it's something with the word stultus. So, stulte. Why else might I have an E here? It does come from the word stultus. I'm having trouble with Question? That. It's I'm a interrogative? It could be, but what case would this be? I, I couldn't figure that out. Eh. Oh, vocative. Vocative, oh. yes. So we end, and this is actually what we'd expect, right? We would end or begin with a vocative set off by a comma. Uh, Foolish man. Okay. And notice we have a vocative. What person in number is our verb? Second person singular. Another reason why we would expect a vocative. How are you doing, uh, Rose? Right? Vocative. So when, we're, when we have second persons, just be aware that you might have a vocative somewhere. Because we're to, you know, to bring up uh, who uh, is being addressed. Okay? All right. So actually, after, you know, foolish man. So you don't have true leisure. Good. You do not have true leisure, foolish okay. man. It just seemed funny with the stulta and the... Yeah, kind of yeah, things. stultus. And it's kind of one of those things, again, you need to see a certain number of examples to kind of go, ah, oh, that's right, provocatives, watch out for me. How about his only guess was a real bore? Oh, okay, yeah. good, let's do that. That's really fun. Okay, and this is a great payoff for why you make your kids learn macros, okay? So, which, which I know eventually, um, you know, you're going to go crazy for. Okay. Yeah, that was a hard one. So, if you look underneath, it says, um, this is by Marshall. So, Marshall, and, and the Romans in general, they like writing these things. And, and actually, Ben Franklin would do the same thing. He had a little book of these, like, witty sayings. So, they eventually, Franklin's eventually come out in... Um, Oh, with uh, Poor Richard's Almanac, right? Mm -hmm. And he kind of inscribes them in as like proverbs. And that's how they come into English. But the epigram is this famous uh, way of speaking that, that basically, think of Shakespeare, right? Brevity is the soul of wit. So the more <clears throat> concise you can be, the more clever you are versus being extremely wordy, right? Mm -hmm. So this is um, an epigram, and it's in the form, if you look underneath, it says... It's in the it's an elegaic couplet. Okay. Now I want to explain what that means. You know what a couplet means. What's a couplet? Two lines that go together. Okay, good. Two lines that go together. So I'm going to copy these lines out and show you how poetry works in Latin. Cannot set it up. I need to 
No, oh, I did. I dropped off the S. Thank you. That's actually going to become important. Uh, today. Cut Q. Yeah. Now this is a good piece of Latin poetry. First of all, let's just let's forget that it's poetry for a second. Let's find our verbs, treat it like we treat any other sentence. Cannot. Okay, good. Cannot is one verb. Habet. And habet's the other verb. Okay, so we it looks like here we have two clauses, each with one verb. Okay, that's nice. What's the, what does it look like the subject is to our first verb, cana? That's where I got confused. I mean, Successilianus. Cacilianus, yeah, here at the end. Yeah. Okay? And we're going we're gonna to explain why he's out here at the end. That's what we're going to get to. Okay? But for the meantime, let's just label him. He is our nominative subject now. Okay? Who has? Quiz Hubbard. What's the subject of Hubbet? Cecily honest. Yeah, there he is again. Again, our nice little subject noun in the nominative. Okay. So we've got two, uh, kind of for two simple sentences, we've got Caecilianus does not dine. Caecilianus has. Okay. And then let's see what we've got left. And we can, again, now we can try to puzzle these out whatever way we want. Um, anything we can make sense of. Is Tita or Taita, is that sort of like the address? Here? It is. It's the vocative. There it is again. Tita. Oh, yeah. Ah, Titus. Okay, I get okay. it. So there's our vocative. And these are often like fictional. Sometimes they are real friends, but we'll see why he needs this name to, to be right here. We'll see. So sometimes they'll use names in the vocative to cheat. We'll see. Okay. Uh, so then we've got Sine Apro. Without, without a our pig. Okay, good. Without a pig. So this is a prepositional phrase, um, upper yeah, in the vocative, and then noster. Does that mean our? It means our. What's it modifying? Pig. For? Yeah. No. Oh. Adjectives always match what they modify in gender case. I don't know how you're with that. I need you to go back um. to you. Okay. Well, let's look at this ending. So if we looked it up, that's what we would find in the dictionary. We would find, find noster, nostra, nostrum. Masculine, then, right? Masculine nominative. So what's it modifying? Yes. Cecilianus. Cecilianus. Good. Okay. okay. So it, it literally, our Cicilianus, or our Caecilianus. What is he saying? Our Caecilianus. Like he's our, our friend. Though. Yeah, there we go. So that would probably, like, our friend Caecilianus mm -hmm. does not dine without a boar, mm -hmm. or is not eating without a pig. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's not without our board. It's without a pig. That's right. Our, yeah, so it's like our buddy, our, our buddy Caecilianus is not eating without a pig, which is to say, right, he is eating with a pig. So it's like Titus, not our Caecilianus does not dine without a board? Yeah. Okay. Caecilianus has a bellum con we want. Our dinner, our beautiful guest. He has a beautiful guest. Well, that's confusing because... It's ironic. Well, he's not. He's not eating without a pig. He has a beautiful guest. Oh, because can five of them is uh, singular. It is singular, and can we want is actually masculine as well. So it, that is a first declension masculine noun. So that bellum is masculine because it is matching this. But it's still might imply a woman. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, so, he, um, so Matt, you're at a dinner party, you know. Oh, I thought we were eating pig. Well, Caecilianus, he's, he's eating pig. Or he's, he is dining with pig. There she is. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Ha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, just a nice old joke, right? Uh, go watch the Marx Brothers or something <laughs> if you want to see, you know, variations on this theme. Bellum is confusing because it could be bellum. Yeah, that's right. It's very confusing. You just have to go, you know, is it war or war? Just like, you know, am I warning or is it war? Like the clones or whatever it is. So here, yeah, we kind of have to figure out. It's a... It's a Pretty guest that he has with him. Okay, so here's the cool thing. So this is called, this pattern, it says it in that paragraph, it's called an elegaic couplet. Elegaic couplet. And this is a rhyme, or a, a, probably a meter, that the Romans take from the Greeks. The Romans take everything artistic from the Greeks. They only invent one thing, and that's satire. 
Um, everything else they just take from the Greeks. So this meter is a Greek meter. And the way that the Greek and then Roman meters work is they work on longs and shorts. Okay? Long syllables and short syllables. Okay? So there are two rules or two ways that's, that a syllable can be long. It can be long if it has a macron vowel, so a long macron vowel, or it can be long if you have a diphthong in it. And those are the first way. It's called long by nature. So macron vowels... So I'm just going to mark these long. Notice I'm, and this is called scanning. So that's long, 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 wee one, kai, kili. Oops, I actually erased that long. Okay. So those are all we call long by nature. Okay. They have long vowels or diphthongs. The other way that a syllable can be long is if it's followed by a double consonant. Two consonants make the vowel long. And you'll hear as we recite this what that's going to sound like. So in theory, I have two consonants here. It's already long, but that would also become long. Here, A, one, two consonants. See them? T, S. So do they have to be in the same word? They don't have to be in the same word. They can go into the next word. Sine is not long by nature, it's not long by position, it's short. Ne, same thing, short. Upro, long or short? Short. Followed by two consonants. Two consonants, long. Nos. Long. Long, followed by two consonants, so long by position. Er, long. long. T. Uh, short. Short. Te. Short. 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 Kid. Short. Lit. Short. Nos. Short. And here, what we'll see is almost always at the end, it could go either way. So we'll, we'll mark it short, but it could also be long, because I do have a B coming up. Okay? E, or bet, sorry. Long. Long, double consonant. Um. Long. 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 Con. Long. Long, by position. One. Long. Long, MC, kit, short, lit, short, nus, H's get aspirated, so they, they disappear. Short. So it will be short. Ha, huh. short, bet. Short. Okay, now if we're right, that should be an elegaic coupling. Ready? I'm going to read to you the meter, and I'll actually mark it over. This is not one of the meters I have at the top of my head, so I'm going to cheat because I'm a teacher. Okay. So it should go long, short or long. Yep. Long, two shorts. Long, 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 long. Wait, where am I? Sorry. <laughs> Wait, where was I? Long, sorry, long, long, short, short, good. Long, 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 long. Uh oh. Hold on, I'm going to come back. There's my short short I need. So I need a long. There should be a long somewhere in here that we've missed. Long, long. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, hold on. Long, short, short. Oh, no, we're good. Sorry. Long, short, short. Long, long. Good. So that will scan long. Long, long. Long, long. Long. <gasps> Hard break. Good. That's what we would expect. Uh, long, short, short. Long, short, short. Short. There it is. There's no, like, pattern to it. There, there is. Okay? There's the same kind of pattern that, like, what's the pattern of Amazing Grace? Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Long, 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 long. Long, long, short, short, short. Or actually, short, short, long. Long, long. So every song, so to speak, has its own pattern, right? So the elegant couplet, this is its pattern. So let me see if we're missing one thing. Long K not sine a pro noster tite kai kilianus belon con we won kai kilianus habe kai kilianus habe. So it goes dum 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 diddy dum 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 diddy dum diddy dum 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 diddy dum diddy diddy. 
You don't have to worry about it at a time. But anyway, so the way that it works, the way that it works with these names, and again, think of how even case would work. I can swap these words around any order I want them to be to fit my meter. Right? So even certain adjectives or certain nouns, for example, um, one noun that could work here but actually ends up not working would be a noun like porcus, P-O-R-C-U-S. And one reason why that may not work, well, actually that one would work, porco. Actually that would scan the same way. But sometimes even nouns, adjectives, they have to kind of switch them up to try to figure out what would work best. Um, so they have that, that's like a cultural, like, this is like that's iambic right. pentameter. That's right. That's exactly right. An iambic pentameter <laughs> comes from, uh, it's this pattern, and I am. Hold on. Core I am. An I am is this? No. An I am is that. I am. Core I am. Yeah. So that's a core, long, short, and an I am is short, long. So that, in, Rome, in the Latins call that a core I am. We shorten that for probably our most famous meter into iambic pentameter, which is five lengths of iams, right? Mm -hmm. So, same thing. And yeah, the poet knows his meter, so to speak. And if you're, if you're a culture that is based in hearing audible, or, you know, listening to poetry, you know the meter. So, for example, probably the most famous meter for the Romans um, and the Greeks is, uh, it's called... We call it historic, or pardon me, um, heroic meter, and it's the, um, oh my word, uh, uh, dactylic hexameter. Um, so the Odyssey, the Iliad, the Aeneid, all written in this meter. And so it's almost like when you hear the first lines, you almost go, oh, here comes a heroic element, because they're using this meter. If you imagine. It's almost like um, when I was a kid, and any movie that I saw that started with that 20th Century Fox scroll, I thought was Star Wars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you get da 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 and I was saying oh, Star Wars, because that that's what I was, you know, that's what I wanted it to be, and that's you know, kind of what I didn't understand how movie, you know, how the movie industry works. <laughs> Whereas now I'm well versed in the music industry, or the movie industry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, all that to say is it'd be the same thing. Like a poet starts busting out. Um, you know, sing O Muse of the man, uh, of Peleus' son Achilles. The son of Peleus? Something like that. Anyway. It's amazing that they could do it like in that meter and it's still witty. And it's yeah, it's still, that's right. But it's the same thing. I mean, so like probably the closest we get to this is rap today. Like a, like a rap battle type of guy who can, who can spout it in, in rhyme. But that's just rhyme. That's not meter into rhyme, usually. Okay, so that was that translation. If you want the most fun use of witty comebacks, check out the Spartans, though. So here you get the one, right? Uh, literally, you will not be, see the sky uh, on account of the number of our arrows, right? Oh, and so the Spartans respond with? We like to fight in the shade. Good, yeah, we, we'll fight in the shade. Um, so if you want to check out, there's a, there's a book called um, Famous Sayings of the Spartans. I can't remember who writes it. But anyway, it's just line after line after line of kind of Spartan comebacks and witticisms and things like this, which is it's really fun, actually. Um, what is the last sentence of this? Is it, and Leonidas uh, shouts, um, fight with spirit, perhaps we dine today among ghosts? That's right, okay. yeah. So, um, come animis, yeah. Um, and, and then Leonidas is actually outside of it. This is a little tricky. So the Lacedaemoni, that's an alternate, like for us, we would probably still call them Spartans, but another term, I think it's for their country, is Lacedaemon. Mm -hmm. And so the Lacedaemoni, it'd be like saying, you know, fight Americans or fight United States citizens or something like that. Mm -hmm. So just kind of an alternate name that's used, um, which actually sometimes makes reading like say the Odyssey tricky is that sometimes they'll call them Greeks and sometimes they'll call them sons of Pellas or sometimes they'll call them that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And they just switch back and forth and they just assume, hey, well you know the Ga the people from Gath are also Philistines and mm -hmm. you know, sub tribes and this and that. And so. Yeah. so yeah, fight with spirit. Um, today we will die and perhaps we will die among um, the dead. Do you have time to do one more? Yeah. Number 
Yeah. Uh, like the, the ancient sentences, number 11? The sequence. Yeah. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's look at what are our verbs on number 11. Um, Satis is an adjective. Um, enough. enough. Oh. I have Habeo. Habeo, good. Right, you're right, you're right. Uh, one of my favorite. And then Dabo. I always joke, like, that's like, head Babo. <laughs> I'm doing. Um, Okay, <laughs> so there's our first verb, habebo, I will have, and the next one is? Dabo. Good, dabo, I will give. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so we've got um, like an at least compound predicate. I thought debo was like must, and it has to work with another verb or something. Am I thinking of... Oh, you're thinking of debeo. With Different e. word? Yeah, so you're thinking uh, of debeo, debeo. Oh, that's I must, I ought to, oh, I have to. Right. Yeah. So, dumbo just from do, dare, um, I give. Yeah. So, I will have, <coughs> pardon me, si, uh, si quando satis pecuniae habebo. See, I think I got confused because I thought satis was a verb. Okay. So, we've got, um, so what will he have? Enough money. Yeah, good. So, he, it's kind of tricky. Um, and oftentimes, if we start with the if clause, the process of the conditional, it can be a little confusing on our first translation. So, um, it literally says is if when I have enough money, or if when I will have enough money. But we might want to go with the the the, the uh, apotesis, the then. So then I will give may. My. Now here, notice it's a first person verb and may. So then I will give may, pronoun. To me? No. no. To Direct myself? object. Myself. So I will give myself concilio et philosophia. Counsel and philosophy. To counsel and philosophy. So, so here, right, basically saying, then I'll study them. Oh. Right? I will give myself to them. Okay. So, that is the tomb. So it's, it's working with that C clause. So it's a condition. So if, then. Right? So here you could even leave it out and you could say, like, I will give myself to counsel in philosophy when, or, you know, and again, it's a little redundant in English, if, when, but when I have enough money. It's amazing when you get one word wrong, it makes no sense. It, uh, it, can, it can really mess up the sense of the sentence, you know? Like, you can still kind of clunk out 90% of it right, but you won't get the kind of the gem yeah. insight, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole, one of the um, famous words or favorite words to kind of play with is the word satis, enough. Same thing now, right? Enough. What does it mean to have enough, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'll study philosophy when I have enough money. Yeah, enough money, what is it? Enough money is just 100 bucks more than your brother-in-law has or something like that. <laughs> so that's when you'll have enough is when you make more than, you know, whoever it is that you're aiming at. But even then you won't have enough, right? So anyway. Give yourself it to a noun. It's like fair or balanced or equal or whatever. <laughs> more, right? More. I need more. Okay. Chapter six. Chapter six isn't going to really add um, a ton. Really, there's just one main thing that chapter six is going to add. Um, but first, I want to go back to some, and that's what we'll start with. So that's on page um, 37. So sum, we've so far got the present tense of sum, right? Sum s s, sum s s is sum. That's the present indicative of sum. But then on this page at the bottom, they give you the future of sum and the imperfect. Now, because this is an irregular verb, you, you just kind of have to learn these forms. There's not too, you know, too many ways around that. Um, as an encouragement for you as co-teachers, um, <laughs> they won't get this until like the end of their sixth grade year, okay, to dip into other tenses. I think I mentioned that already, but if not, let me just encourage you with that. So, ero, eris, erit, eremos. Eritus, errant. Just in case you thought there would be all eyes. No. Psych. A you in the third person form. In the imperfect. 
One thing worth noting about the imperfect is that it's only one R. Okay? And the reason why I highlight this is because we know a verb to go astray. Oh, error. Right? Yeah. So notice some just has one R, error, oh. or eros. Versus the verb to go astray has two R's, eros, eros. So it's just sort of the same except with A's? Yes. Which is actually a great little observation. Again, Latin, um, we will learn as we keep going further in and further up. Um, these vowels are really precise. They matter a lot, right? Eris, I, or pardon me, you will be, versus eras, you were. Something like so there's nothing super fancy or new grammatically going on there. It's just forms of some to memorize, okay? But the new kind of trick is the verb possum possa. And when I say those two principal parts, your mind should already be triggered. Something should be going off right here. When I, those are the two principal parts, possum possa. Does that sound right? No, what should we have? What are we used to? Agricola, agricola. Okay, well, but these are verbs. Oh, verbs. Um, oh, the, um, let me think. Okay, stop. Let me think. I can't think. What would we expect? What do, what, what do uh, most verb patterns look like for those two principal parts? Video, okay, video, videre. Okay, yeah. Right? Umbelo, umbelare. Venio, <laughs> venire, um, whatever it is. So we're used to seeing in that infinitive, what do the infinitives end with? O and era. Good, so an RE, right? So something, you know, some kind of vowel with an RE. Yeah, that's what, okay, that's what the third graders are doing. This is why I've got three grades. I've got my Latin, Alan's <laughs> Latin, and right. Latin, and I can't keep track hey, of it all. Hey, I even teach I more know. levels of Latin than that. I'm with you. That's why we're like, wait, you haven't had that word yet? I'm like, uh, no. All right. So when I see that infinitive, kind of alarm bells are going off in my head. That's, this has got to be weird. This is irregular. And it is irregular. Just that verb. This verb, yeah. So sum esse is one irregular verb, which again, notice the same kind of thing is happening in the infinitive. Ooh, this is telling me, sum esse is telling me something's going on here. Okay. But I want to copy these forms down and kind of give us a second. And because it's irregular, we just have to memorize it. And see if you guys can observe any patterns, or whatever, whatever you observe. You can see it there. Oh yeah, and the same thing. It's the same <gasps> okay, good. So that is half of the trick. It ends, <clears throat> pardon me, in forms of sum. Sum s est, sum s est is sunt. Okay, good. That's half of the trick. What about the other half? Oh. Pause or pot? Yeah, pause or pot. Delve into that with like a hypothesis. How would I know if it's pause or pot? Can you come up with a rule? If there's another T in it, it's got a T. No. Pot. pot. Yep. If, yep. If the ending ends in a T. Or if it's got a T in the ending. If you would have dropped the macron, I don't know. Try again. <laughs> oh no, that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, it's the science in here. <laughs> and that clock's so loud when it's quiet. If the form of sum, if there's an E in it, it gets a T. If there's a U in it, it gets an S. Oh, very close, very close, very close. Try it again. If the form of sum begins with an E, yeah. then oh. pause, 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 oh, pause, pause, oh, T. There we go. Yep. So if the form of sum begins with an E, it's a pot. It gets po right huh. pot as its stem. If the form of sum begins with an S, right, it's going to get pos. Uh, double S. Possum, yeah. possumus, possum. Okay? okay? Now, we see then that all we've got is pos or pot and then forms of sum, right? Mm -hmm. 
What if I made you try to put this into the future without looking? If your hypothesis is correct. Into the future. Into the future. Pacero. Okay. Pa Patero. 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 Right? Pateribus. Pateritus. Paterant. Let's try it in the imperfect. Paterum. Pateras. Paterat. Paterimus. Pateratus. Paterant. And check out the paradigm. Where? Uh, page uh, 36. No, that's right, 38. Yeah. There you go. Right? So this is a great example of where th there are some things you do have to memorize, and then there are other things where you just need to memorize a rule, right? So when I form, what I, what I memorize is I memorize my forms of sum, essa. And then what I memorize about possum is... Possum is just the form of sum with pot, if it, the form of sum starts with an E, or pos, if the form of sum starts with an S. Now you have the whole paradigm now, mm -hmm. right? By applying that rule to our forms of sum. This is where getting videos save you. Because I like to let the classes sit up for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes on it until they figure it out. Look, I love that stuff. Okay, so here's the other kind of new thing, but this isn't really new for us. The verb possum, posse, do you see an English word there? Posse? Oh, that's not a bad guess. It's not posse. Uh, think, uh, dun, 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 dun. Mission? Impossible! Impossible! Okay, so if it's possible, it means you can do it, right? So, passe, or possum passe, means we can translate it two ways, right? I can, possible or can. I am able, what did you say? If it's a possum, you can eat it. There you go, yeah, it just depends which state you're in, right? right. And how fresh it is. Um, okay, so, if I say this verb means I am able, what am I going to expect to find? Another verb after it? What kind of verb? An infinitive. An infinitive. There it is. What kind of infinitive? What do we call it? Era. I don't know. It ends in the era. Why do you need an infinitive? I am able... To do something. Yeah. What do we need? It? That this is... Helping verb. We don't call it helping. What, what's that special term for an infinitive? Your vest looks really nice today. Thank you. Complimentary okay. infinitive. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about that now? Can we talk about that? No. Maybe no. Okay. All right. So a complementary infinitive, okay? And I'm going to quadruple underline the E. It completes it, right? I am able to what? You know, complete that thought, okay? Um, one of the fun little things that studying Latin will do is whenever you go to, like, a restaurant, they'll talk about, say, a cake that complements or a wine that complements. They will misspell it. Yeah, absolutely. Is it complementing it? Like... Hi, Mr. Cake. You look nice today. That's the I, right? Ah. I compliment you. Hi, that's nice. Compliment to complete it or bring it to fullness, mm -hmm. like angles, right? That add up to 90 degrees. That's ah. complementary. Right? Okay. Ah. So, complementary infinitive is what we need to complete it. Um, a complimentary wine would complete, would round out the what, fullness, I don't know, about wines and cakes and things. But anyway, but you can look at menus and see if they misspell it. They usually do. It's fun. That's, the, that's what grammar gives you, is you can laugh at menus. And advertisement. So. Okay. But otherwise, there's no new grammar. But let's test our ability to find complementary infinitives. Okay? Let's look... <laughs> At uh, practice and review number one. So we'll just go through and we're just going to start to program our minds to look for complementary infinitives. Okay, so number one, <coughs> pardon me, uh, verbs. Poteramus. Okay, there's pateramus. Okay, is that a form of possum posse? No. Pateramus. Yeah, but, oh, uh, uh. It's imperfect. It is imperfect. Okay, so if it's a form of possum, I'm going to expect to find an infinitive somewhere. Do I find it? Videre. Good, videre. So uh, they were not able, or pardon me, we were not able to see. Good. Huh. Okay, do we have any other verbs in that line? <clears throat> well, labon's good. Somebody is 
not doing well, or they were not doing well. Okay, number two, uh, do, can you find a, ver a form of the verb possum possa? Pater. Good, patrate right there at the end. If I find that, I should be able to find an infinitive somewhere to complete it. Sati. There we go. So he will not be able to satisfy. Mm -hmm. Okay, number three, form of possum possa? Potter. Potter, that's good. Infinitive? Good, there it is. So they uh, they were not able uh, to um, learn. All right, number four, a form of possum possa? Potter. Potter, there it is at the end. Uh, infinitive? Luminary. There we go. Five, form of possum possa? No. Good, no. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so what is our verb? Wakabit. Good, wakabit. Uh, what tense is that verb in? Bit. Future. Oh. Future, good. Bo this bit. There it is. Okay, number six. Form of possum passe. Mm -hmm. Nope, none. What's our verb? Cogitabans. Good. What tense? <laughs> past. Uh, we have three past tenses in Latin. Uh, imperfect. Imperfect. There we go. Okay, so they were thinking. Uh, number seven. Hang on, go back to what you said. Uh huh. Then, because we were having trouble, like, when we were trying to compare how we were, like, like is there a right way, like, what path, I mean, oh, it doesn't have to do with the, like, I did call versus I called versus I have called, like, they're all, that's all, you can translate the imperfect all those ways, right? Not really. Um, the imperfect, you could have two ways. So, actually, that, that example, um, that sentence is a good example. So, um, your daughter's... Saipe Kogatavant were often thinking about books of the great poet, or of the books of the great poet. Uh, so with this sentence, we have Saipe, an adverb, right, modifying our verb, often. <clears throat> so we could do two things with it. So remember with the imperfect, the imperfect takes place in the past, right, past, present, future. So it takes place in the past, but what we're describing is, is a type of action, or we call it the aspect of the action. So an imperfect verb is an ongoing past action. I was walking my dog down the street. Okay? The other way we could use the imperfect is if it's a repeated, we call it an iterative past action. I would often walk my dog. And so that here, actually, there's a great example of where you could translate it either, but we have an iterative action. They would often think about. So we could translate it, so translate they it. were they often thought. thinking, or they often thought. But either way, do you see how it describes that kind of action? Again and again and again, they would think about this. Again and again and again. Versus... <clears throat> um, last month, they read the book. You see the difference? That is a completed past action. We're not there yet, but that's called the perfect. It's done. From the mind of the speaker, I'm done with that action. Versus this kind of action, this imperfective or this it iterative. It seems like the saipe is what communicates that. It does. It does. But even if saipe wasn't there, with our Latin eyes, we can see the imperfect being used. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's whereas English, for example, here's a great example. When you read the epistles of Paul, okay, um, sometimes our translators help us. A lot of times they don't. Paul, I'm unaware of any instances where Paul uses the second person singular. I believe 100%, which I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure there's an exception somewhere. But anyway, he always uses the second person plural. But in English, our translators don't put in there Hey, y'all, y'all stop fighting. You know, it's like... If they were better in English, they would have done that. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, uh, Flannery O'Connor or somebody will do that for us. But anyway, so, so with our English eyes, we only see, and maybe dangerously, right? Because we think it's, it's a singular, but Paul's actually talking to the church as a whole, right? right? As a plural, whole. Um, whereas, again, we maybe only see a singular. But the Greek would represent it as a plural. The Latin re would represent it as a plural. Here, seeing the imperfect in Latin would tell me I either have this kind of ongoing action, they would read, 
or they were reading these books, or again and again and again, they would read, or they used to read, is some, some ways that we communicate that. But not that they read. But probably not they read. Again, unless there we would need, they often read those books. So that's how we communicate that again and again and again in English. So English, um, to, to kind of reiterate the point, English tenses tend to use a lot of helping verbs and then adverbs to communicate something. So, um, so uh, we don't have to go into literary stuff. But anyway, um, English, yeah, English is going to use a lot of helping verbs. Latin can just use the tenses. So, you know, it doesn't have to say cipher, for example. In this instance, they do, but they don't have to. I was gonna want to get into um, the dead by James Joyce, but we don't have time to get into the dead. So. It's the greatest short story. It's like the only short story on the like top 100 things written in English list. <laughs> Worth our time. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that's that's actually it for chapter six. There isn't a whole lot of new stuff. The one thing I would encourage you to do to uh, kind of get ready for next time. So we're going to meet one more time before Christmas break. It'll be actually like a month out, exactly, because we won't, um, because of Christmas break, we'll, we'll go early again. But um, the next chapter is going to introduce the third declension. So, so yeah, really make sure that we're pretty solid on the first and second declensions, because when we get the third, it's, you know, more balls in the in the hopper for I have three got like. <laughs> the card. It's okay. There's this point. Is it okay that you know I have to flip back to see, or should it all be memorized? Um, you know, I mean, like for for like for the kids. Yeah. We're going so slowly, and mm -hmm. they're getting so many reps that mm -hmm. it's got to be memorized for them. Yeah. The mo. I mean, the the honest truth is, if the more you're flipping, I would I should say this, not to dog on you, but mm -hmm. it's better to be flipping than to have cheat sheets. I thought, okay. or or make like a master cheat sheet, and you just know because cheat sheets ultimately will keep us from memorizing things. Mm -hmm. Whereas like even if you have to flip, it's almost like a little punishment. You know, you like yeah, I gotta yeah. look it up again, and right. it, you wish it, you remember it. It works in your mind. I think it almost like trains your mind to like, come on, don't make. Like, like, let's just learn this so we don't have to waste time flipping back. Yeah. So if you kind of use a cheat sheet, as I'm not busting on you, but like, then just kind of know that's probably what you'll do throughout. And that's okay. Like, there will be a time down the years where you're like, oh, boom, boom, and it, it'll become more and more second nature. But um, it's okay if you're flipping back and forth. Okay. Probably the most important thing, and maybe where you'll be most blessed is, you know, just really understanding the grammar. And I would say, if you're not doing it already, you're at a point where you could start to bring, or start to consider bringing like even a, Bible, a Latin Bible to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Be fun um, to do. Can you, before we stop, can you give me like, I keep wanting like an example of an adjective and a noun that don't look the same? Yeah. Because I feel like I'm, I'm struggling with that concept. Yeah. And I just, like, so actually we had one in that um, four sentence. So, <clears throat> pardon me, we had, um, right, he has a, or you have, what was it, he has? He has a bellum, a beautiful conwiwa, a beautiful dinner guest. And why do they not look the same? Okay, so they don't look the same. Remember, the adjective rule is adjectives must match the nouns they modify in gender, case, and number. Right. That doesn't mean they have to look the same. So the way we can check this, so we can say is, okay, what gender, case, and number? Because that's what they've got to match in. So what's strange, or what's, what makes this noun special, so to speak, is that it is a first declension masculine. Okay? So it belongs to the first pattern, first declension pattern, but it is masculine Accusative. So, ah, it doesn't have to match in terms of first or second declension. It, it has to match in terms of That's right. gender. So, oh. so this adjective is, so to speak, following its adjective rules, which is this: bellus, bella, bellum. How do you know it's masculine, though? How do, it's just, it's a memory thing. So, what I would do is I would say, you know, and you'll kind of start to build this list, and kind of the most common words are nauta. Poeta, Agricola, Conwiwa. Let's see if I can come up with another one off the top of my head. 
It's masculine. These are all masculine words first declension. Most of them are professions: sailor, poet, farmer, or role. dinner guest. Dinner guest. Okay. And and again, it's a great reminder of like why you don't have to like dig into gender, uh, right? Because you could be tempted to be like, well, a poet is a, an effeminate male. No, any more than a sailor is an effeminate male, or a farmer is. You know, it's just, it's just. I don't know what it is. I, I'm sure there's some some articles that have been written for many many years why these are masculine nouns in the first declension. But they are. That confused me. Yes. Now I'm getting it. Understandably. Understandably. When we get into the third declension, it will become much more normal. So I'll give you one that's going to happen. Okay, so the third declension, same thing. Nouns follow their patterns. Adjectives follow their patterns. So the adjective, one adjective that we know is multus, I think, right? Many. Yeah. Multus, multa, multo. Okay, which says this. When I'm a masculine adjective, I'm going to go multus, multi, multo, multum, second declension. Right. When I'm a feminine adjective, when you need me to modify a feminine noun, multa, multi, multi, multum, multa, first declension feminine. When you need me to modify a neuter noun, I'm going to be a second declension neuter. Om, e, o, m, o, i. Okay. What we're going to meet next chapter, and the kids will get to this, the fifth graders will get to this in chapter eight. And it will be the it'll be the hardest besides the verb chapter they're on now. It will be the hardest chapter they do. So I I will plunk down right now that everyone will have to basically completely redo assignment. I mean I'll, I'll put money on the table because what's going to happen is they'll meet these nouns and adjectives that aren't this pattern. Okay, so the one that jumps into my mind is army force hostess hostess is that enemy. That's enemy. Wait, I'm that's the same words. That's what it looks like to you. So it's not. Okay? <laughs> so when we get into the third next time, what we'll learn is that in the third declension, the first form can be anything. It is an algebraic random variable. Okay? So for example, we'll go, let's just go through dinosaurs. You've got Tyrannosaurus rex, and that becomes rex regus. We've got, um, think of some other dinosaurs. Triceratops. Okay, so there you've got T O P S. So that's that random. Um, I was at uh, Chameleon. Is, is it Topius then? Yeah, it should be Tops Topus. I'm just not 100% sure of that yeah. gender form because that is random. So a chameleon is a camellio. Oops, for me. Camellio, chameleonis. So what stays the same is the is. So what we'll learn, what the kids will learn, what we'll learn next month is, whenever you see a whatever is, third declension. Okay? So for example, if we said the many enemies, hostis, the many enemies marched against us, what we would have is multi hostes. Uh, wait. Second declension. Nominative plural, third declension, nominative plural. Oh, we just haven't learned. We just haven't learned that yet. That's right. So I'm going to act like a second declension masculine. I'm going to act like a third declension masculine because that's what I am. Huh. See, I was getting confused because I assumed it had to just like be, yeah. Look the same. Right. And I that's, get the that's kind thing. of where it starts. Yeah. But then, for, then you meet some first declension masculines. And then you meet the third. And then the third just blows it all out. It's great. Okay? Awesome. Are you going to be like it? Thank you, guys. Is your